Thank you so much. It is an honor to share our research with you. My name is Michael Academia, an MS candidate at William and Mary. I would like to acknowledge my co-author, Dr. Harmony Dalglesh. Now, this is not my master thesis, but a project that I've been involved in for the past two years that involved citizen science and Osprey Nest web cameras. But before I proceed, this was a photo taken by a citizen scientist of an Osprey nestling in a total full-blown food coma. One woman eating, then boom, baby down, baby down. This project is about Osprey nest success, the impact of high fish deliveries with low variation. In this presentation, I will cover the protocol with some time allotted in the end for some questions and answers. This project is very dear to me and to those whom it represents, the elderly, the retired, those who are ill and disabled, those who can't afford expensive birding gear or to travel, especially those who need to stay in the comfort and safety of their own homes. And unfortunately with COVID, the world gets it. But that should not exclude us from participating in science and collecting data. Citizen science is a growing field and on par with the rigors of academics and professionals. Citizen science can produce high quality data with reliable and valid scientific outcomes, which can lead to unexpected insights and innovations. Beneficial results for science and society are yet to be realized. This project would not be possible without citizen scientists, also with our nest web cameras and our beloved ospreys. They are high profile species. What does that mean? They're highly visible and highly charismatic. You bring the prey out of the water and they put them on display, which makes them ideal for nest web cameras. Also, they mostly eat fish. They're tolerant of short-term nest disturbance. They habituate to humans. They're central place foragers and exhibit strong nest fidelity. So of course, private landowners, businesses, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, and universities have made viewing ospreys accessible at large via live broadcasts online, such as YouTube. Despite the wealth of information and high participation from citizen science, not much science is being done. Here we present a novel approach that can further our understanding on a global, large-scale level. These are our research questions. We hypothesize that with higher amounts of average fish being delivered per day that is consistent with less variation, the more likely it is for a nest to succeed. We also hypothesize that once an osprey nest is successful, we could effectively predict how many young are produced with the differences between the average fish delivered per day and the coefficient of variation. The objective of this study is to assess how both the mean and the coefficient of variation of the number of fish delivered per day may have influenced nest success and nest survival. This study represents 19 osprey web cameras throughout the world, two bioregions, North America, and Europe, four nations, and from one to seven seasons, 2014 to 2020. Basically, a citizen scientist would watch an osprey nest camera and record the number of fish delivered and hand that information over to a manager or a moderator of the chat nest camera chat room. Basically, this would happen during the daylight hours, including holidays and weekends. Now, to ensure high quality data and to minimize bias, the selection of nests included these criteria with direction and oversight from professional and academic organizations and organized data validated by quality assurance protocols. Here highlighted in red are a couple of fish deliveries. They may look like the same fish, but upon closer inspection, these are in fact two different fish. But why is this important? This could have been a source of overcounting or undercounting, hence the importance of direction and oversight and quality assurance protocols. Data collection terminated when nests failed, cameras went offline or failed, or upon fledging. Here are a few items that I need to define. Nest success is when a pair successfully raise at least one young to the 80% of first flight age criterion. And for ospreys, this is about six weeks of age. Number of fledgings amount of young in the nest that reach the 80% criterion. Days of observed nest survival are the days recorded starting from incubation to the end of data collection, such as nestling mortality or fledging. For our statistical analysis, we truncated the data to the first 46 days so that we could make meaningful comparisons between the failed and the successful nest, especially in the early part of the breeding season, which included incubation and the first two weeks of hatching. According to the data collected, the average time in which nests failed was within the first 46 days. Therefore, we set this threshold 
so that we could use this to make effective predictions whether or not a nest would fail or succeed. One of the most difficult parts of this study was that the data were not homogeneous, non-parametric, lack independence, and were correlated. Therefore, we did not have access to our normal statistical tools. But thank goodness for high-powered statistical software such as RStudio and contemporary tools such as the Wilcoxon signed rank test and generalized linear mixed modeling. And we used NEST as a random effect, an average fish delivered per day, and the coefficient of variation as the fixed effects. We're now in the results. We wanted to test if there were significant differences between the failed nest and the successful nest. These are violin box plots, which are highly effective in visualizing the data, the distribution of the data. Blue represents the successful nest, red represents the failed nest. Let's take a look at this first figure with average fish delivered per day as a function of nest success. Notice the failed nest. Here's an upper limit cutoff at around 2.5 fish and data included zeros and ones. The opposite was happening with the successful nest with a lower limit cutoff at around 1.5 fish, but also included, it ranged all the way up to 4.5 fish per day. Let's look at the bottom figure the coefficient of variation as a function of nest success. Notice with the failedness, there is a lower limit cutoff at about 40%. The main thing here to take into account is the range of variation. It is much wider, broader than the successful nest. And notice that the variation focused in the lower levels, concentrating on the lower levels. And according to the Wilcoxon signed rank tests, these were significant. The biological meaning here is that the successful ospreys had enough fish to deliver their young. But not only that, it was consistent with less variation. There was enough resources, enough food availability to provision their young. We stated in our objective, we wanted to assess the association, the influence of these predictor variables on our response variables. And we use generalized linear mixed modeling. We use the jitter function of R so that you can see the data distribution along the model. Now to this figure, to the left, we have nest success as a function of average fish delivered per day. With more average fish being delivered, you can see that it's more likely for a nest to succeed. To the right, we have nest success as a function of variation. The more variation, the more likely it is for a nest to fail. And according to our models, this was significant. And this reinforces the biological meaning that if ospreys have more access, more reliable resources, the more likely it is for a nest to succeed. Next, we wanted to assess the associations of these predictor variables on our response variable. In this case, it is nest survival days observed. Recall, we truncated the data to the first 46 days so that we could make effective predictions, especially in the early part of the breeding season. Notice that with average fish delivered per day, there is a trend that with more fish, the more days of survival. However, according to our model, this was a weak association. To the right, we have nest survival as a function of the coefficient of variation. With more variation, the less days of survival, basically days to failure. And according to our model, this was significant. The biological meaning here is that even though there may be some range of average fish delivered per day, it is more important that it is consistent. If there's consistently enough fish, the more likely it is for a nest to survive, especially in the early part of the breeding season. We hypothesized that we could effectively predict the number of young produced with the differences between the average fish delivered per day and the coefficient of variation. Red represents one fledging, Blue represents two and three. Notice that there are some considerable differences. With the average fish delivered per day, it is slightly lower for the one fledglings. Fledgling. Also, the coefficient of variation. The range of that variation is broader than the two and three fledglings. However, this pattern was not significant. But how does this pertain to conservation biology and wildlife management. It is generally accepted that nest success is a fundamental component to avian populations and to a great degree proliferates the species, but it is not that easy to predict. 
nest success unequivocally affects population size more than clutch size and nestling survival. Nest success is an accessible metric that is efficient to management and is predominantly one of the most used diagnostic features of population dynamics. Here in this photo, a great thing, another osprey nestling in a food coma. Here, not so great. Circled in red, osprey nestlings that died due to starvation. And it's very difficult to witness and observe with a citizen scientist. These nestlings did not get enough food and eventually went into states of convulsions and collapse. So of course, citizen scientists care and we want to help. This study does a great job in quantifying the diet, but we also need to look into qualitative aspects as well, such as fish size and fish species. Qualitative issues are important because prey identification is an essential component of animal ecology. Prey species types and their distributions can impact raptor population shifts. Hence, prey composition is vital for the successful management and conservation of raptors. We have much to gain with citizen scientists and raptor nest cameras. Opportunities have yet to be explored and implemented in education, conservation, and policy. All of the organizations that I'm so thankful for, this is dedicated to the citizen scientists. Literature cited, thank you so much. I would like to open up the floor now to your comments and questions.